Oh, and welcome to the Circle of Love and Light. I'm your host, Dr. Jane Mountrose, and I'm delighted to be here with my partner and co-director of Awakenings Institute, Dr. Philip Mountrose. We're both ministers of holistic healing, spiritual guides, coaches, trainers, and, and more, uh, having been in this field for more than three decades now. Mm -hmm. And with Awakenings Institute, we share a devotion to creating a more loving world. So here we are, and today we're focusing on something that is very interesting. I don't think we've touched on it before in the circle. Um, our focus is on tuning into the Akashic field. Uh, from our experience and the experience of many, many others, uh, this connection can open a whole new realm of possibilities. It's kind of like you're going through a portal into a more expanded view of reality, um, one where there's deeper meaning behind all the events of our lives and our true identities, uh, we would say, as cosmic beings, really, who are here with a much deeper purpose and unique gifts to share. So <laughs> that's quite a bit. Um, during our time together, we're going to dive into the significance of the Akashic field and why this connection is so important to us at this time of the Great Awakening. We're sharing, we'll be sharing some of our own experiences, which have been pretty monumental, actually, uh, along with a tarot reading to tune into the Akashic field and a, me and a meditation with Archangel Metatron, who is, you could say, our angelic guide into the Akashic records, which are also known as the Book of Life. <laughs> it's really about a very expansive view of our whole past, present, and future. So before we begin, as usual, I want to thank you for joining us and for being emissaries of love and light. The circle is here every week um, at this time to light up our lives and help us to heal, grow, and stand up as beacons of light for the world. So as we're opening to more love and light during our time together, we're also uh, vibrating it out into the world, and we'll be doing that consciously also. So if you're new to the circle, I want to, I'm, I'm going to here connect with our chat. So um, please say hello. Um, even if you're not new to the circle, please say hello if you're here. And oh, this went funny. <laughs> it does funny things. Anyhow, um, let me see if I can get this. Okay, here we are. Um, Say hello and let us know where you're from. Also, feel free to make any suggestions, comments, ask any questions that you have, whatever you want. We love to have it being a sharing experience between us all. And the last thing before we all come together or as a part of coming together, I want to take a moment just to breathe and bring ourselves more into the present moment together. It's interesting or to me amazing how just a few simple breaths can change our state. So with that, we can invite the most amazing love and light from the universe to surround us as we breathe in more love, more light. Beautiful, big inhale. And with the exhale, you can release. Just release any energy that you don't need right now. Anything that's inappropriate, actually, for who you are. Dense energy. Beautiful breaths. You just feel yourself becoming more present in your body in the moment. Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to you, Philip, to tell us a little more about what we're talking about. What is the Akashic field? Um, and what would you like to share about it? Well, let, let me go a little bit into describing what my understanding and current understandings are about the Akashic field. Now, there are other terms uh, you may have heard, and, and those watching, if you in the chat, you know, bring in your thoughts or questions, or what you understand the Akashic field, which is also known, maybe more well-known as the Akashic records or Akashic 
library, although it's actually not a physical or digital library, but it would include all of that and much, much more because it's on a metaphysical higher dimensional realm. And it has all the knowledge of you, your individual past, present, and potential future lives. Uh, the word Akasha, uh, the Akashic Records, is a, is a Sanskrit term, which means the ether. So uh, th there were the four um, elements, uh, earth, air, fire, water, and the ether, the uh, Akasha. That's another term for it. So this is non-physical the Akashic Records, although it contains all the physical recordings, uh, chronology, the energetic imprints of yours and mine and everyone's uh, uh, past, present, and I said potential future. <clears throat> An interesting figure, I'll just note a, a, a contemporary person, Irvin Laszlo is a Hungarian philosopher, and he's in, I think he may be in his 80s. And, and he's a philosopher of science and system theorist. He wrote a book called Science and the Akashic Field. And he talks about it in terms of linking it with science as a unified field, this Akashic field, kind of a fundamental aspect of re reality they sometimes call in um, quantum physics, which he ties it into the zero point field. So everything's rising and residing within this field that unifies everything. Uh, and it underlies and interconnects uh, everything. So it seems pretty hard to grasp your mind about it around it, but if you just allow yourself to be with it, it makes more and more sense, and you can actually experience it directly. Right, right. And as you might imagine from that, there actually is no library, <laughs> <laughs> right? Per no se, physical. Uh, no physical library, no, um, no place, because it, what what we are talking about is a field of energy, a field of really information, you could say. Um, and when we go there, which it is a place where we travel to internally more than anything, because it's always here, <laughs> um, it is common for us to experience it as a library. Uh, some people do, they experience themselves in a library with shelves full of books, um, others, don't experience it as a library at all. I remember one woman, uh, she experienced it as a big crystal structure and all of the crystals had messages for her rather than books having messages for her. Um, uh, it's common for people to receive messages as if they're in books and you open the book and you receive a message. I never received it that way, actually, I always, when I asked, there are, there may and or may not actually, <laughs> depending on the person, be uh, beings there called record keepers. Um, I think I experienced the presence of record keepers. I think you don't, do you, Phil? You don't have I record have. keepers. I, oh, I, you do? Yes, I, I have met record keepers. It's not something that's required, but some people there right. are record keepers there, and that's another accent, possibility of this vast field of, of way of exploring it. Right. For me, there are record keepers who, there are actually, there's a group of them, and there's one particular one who communicates specifically with me. So generally, the idea of going into the records is that you have a question, and in, you're wanting to know about something specific. And I think it is important, really, to stay with one thing, because if you look at the records as the record of all your, everything that's happened to you, past, present, and future, Mm -hmm. that's quite a bit <laughs> mm -hmm. um and when i make an inquiry different things actually can happen most commonly though what i the way i experience it is that they hand me an orb of energy so i just allow myself to be surrounded by that it's like now i'm surrounded by this field of energy and information um and i receive from it so i might receive and actually information words or a scene might unfold for me many things can happen what happens for you Phil? just out of well let, let me give you an example which i did today from my readings um going into the akashic records i used the tarot which we're going to use uh, the good tarot and i got sometimes the uh, card that people are maybe considered a negative card the tower of things crumbling and um so I just went into the Akashic Records. The way I do it now mostly is just 
I open the door, I get in there just by determining it by my intent. And when I'm there, then I'll talk about, well, the world is can crumble at any time like the tower shows. And it has happened in my past lives, um, but I've recovered and even had experiences in this lifetime. So if I want to go into specific sort of disastrous lifetimes, I could have, but I didn't just due to the time and circumstances. So sometimes I'll just say, show me a lifetime where I lost everything and then regain things. And then I'll go into that or just it may be enough to say that's happened to me and I understand that. And I, what did I learn from that? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, I do want to mention before we go further, Nikki is here. Nikki is one of our friends, loving friends of the circle. And she says, good morning, friends, my friends, Sharon thrives. And I, I want to mention Sharon because she's another person. If you're commonly around the circle, you know, Sharon, and she's, She's had some physical challenges now, so we can all send her love as we're here. Um, and I'm happy to know that she's she's doing well. And if maybe Sharon is even listening, I hope I hope mm -hmm. you know how much we love you. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I I think one of the interesting ways to look at it is our brains hold information that we've gathered during this lifetime. So experiences, traumatic experiences, good experiences, our past. If it's from this life, generally we have it in our brains. If we're drawing on information that is not in our brains, that could not possibly be in our brains because they weren't here before we were <laughs> in this lifetime, um, like from a past life, then we are drawing from the records, whether we know it or not. And one of the most poignant experiences I've had as a pat about a past life was um, more than 30 years ago now when I was wondering, I had a question and I was going into uh, a meditative process. We had at, at that time, Philip and I were working with some really wonderful spiritual teachers who were guiding, guiding this, although they didn't really have to guide it. It kind of guided itself as it turned out. Um, so I asked why it was that I had such a hard time expressing myself. And I, I felt that it was a barrier. I was afraid of sharing my, what I saw as my truth um, in groups of maybe even four or five people, not to mention possibly any more than that. Uh, so uh, I was there and I closed my eyes and immediately I, I felt um, I felt myself being burned at the stake and I could feel the flames go coming up my legs and through my body and, and experience the, the terror of the whole thing. Um, and then just went through that and out of my body having died and into this very peaceful place. And as it turned out, it was the reason I said they didn't have to do much is because then I, just somehow <laughs> went back into the experience again um, with the flames coming up through my body and then dying and going out. And it, it repeated a few times until the intensity of it had dissipated. That's actually a technique that is used in hypnotherapy to, to go just to repeat something and allow the intensity to diminish. Um, so it was a very, um, well, at that time, <laughs> I had no, it, well, I believed in past lives, but I had no idea that I could have such a tangible experience of one. Um, and I never really questioned where the information came from. But now my understanding is that when we're drawing on information like that, whether we know about the Akashic records or not, the information is coming from our records. And so people who are doing, for instance, hypnotherapy and going into past lives and diff doing different things with hypnotherapy may commonly um, enter the records without knowing it. I have, though, found it when you're consciously aware of it, um, that it there's much more to it. And I think the 
the experience is even more, it's stronger and the in information is very precise. Like I know exactly who I was in that lifetime now. I know where I was, I know when it was. I've actually been able to track my soul's history all the way back to Atlantis and beyond actually. I'm out now really out in outer space with it. Um, and it is, I think really important actually for us to be able to do this now because it, in this time, what we're wanting to do is bring spirit fully into form, which means that we want to bring the highest level of our identity that we can connect with that energy, that frequency into where we are now. Um, and I think if we can understand who we are, we're all magnificent spiritual beings. If we can understand what that really means, it's uh, it's pretty mind blowing. Wouldn't you say, Philip? <laughs> oh yeah, it is. It's it seems like something drawn out of a Hollywood movie, and probably a lot of Hollywood movies were drawn from the Akashic <laughs> the records, records right? and people's <laughs> past lifetimes and so forth. And right. for me, I've just I haven't really tracked it as linearly. Uh, chronicled it like you have, Jane, but I just use it as needed. Um, so it's a, an incredible resource for getting a deeper understanding of what you're here to do and uh, what your next step is. And uh, I just I just think it's it's a great resource uh, to, to have and to use regularly. Mm -hmm. Right. And more you can do more things with it than that. You can ask for uh, ways to heal certain things. Mm -hmm. You can you can receive activations of light uh, from light beings. There, there are many, many things can happen. Um, I actually now call it my heavenly home. In other words, my soul's home in the higher dimensions more than the Akashic Records. And although I did initially see a library with books, um, it's pretty much, the books are pretty much gone now. And I'm kind of, I'm there with the, the whole cosmos you know kind of like that beautiful starry sky above me and and a vast uh, landscape around me so it is it's a just a very different thing than it started out to be mm -hmm. and i think that's often the way it is i think it, the way that people perceive it does evolve and we do actually connect with the records in different dimensions and some people, if you read about it, they'll say, well, the records are in the seventh dimension or some, some will even say, well, the records, they're in the Pleiades, you know, so, I don't know where that came from. But um, my experience was what I felt is I started connecting with the records in the sixth dimension. And then gradually as my, I was able to raise my vibration, which is a gradual process for all of us. Uh, I've went first into the eighth dimension then the 10th dimension and uh it's been it's been just an incredible incredible journey i think uh part of the records is that idea of thinning the veil it's it's sort of curious that we're on the other side and all of this is you know our whole reality is spiritual and metaphysical and then we incarnate because we want these physical experiences but there's the forgetting our birth is but a forgetting, as William Wordsworth said. Right. Uh, but the veil is thinning, so that means we have more access and more and more people as they awaken. There's a general sort of force field and morphic field and availability to, to access these records, which are in you know the most extraordinary library in the universe. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think I'd like to trace it back even further for, for us and for me. Uh, the way, actually, over the last few years, the way all of this started in terms of taking a different view of the path of, you could say, the path to ascension, the path for awakening your spiritual growth. Um, I was having a, it was an angelic Reiki session. I was the client, <laughs> the receiver uh, with a, with a person who was a very skilled practitioner and when the session was completed archangel metatron came 
in to me, appeared to me. Um, and he said that he wanted to talk to me, <laughs> kind of like, we need to talk, you know? And I said, okay. Um, so the next day I went into a meditation and connected with Archangel Metatron. And he said that it was time for us to access our full range of resources. This is the way he described it. Um, and which included uh, connecting with the archangels, the ascended masters, uh, the divas of nature. It's like all of these aspects of our reality that are present here, not in the third dimension, <laughs> but that we have access to multidimensionally. Um, and then going into the records to learn more about our history and the many things that you can do uh, in the Akashic records. And it's, it's interesting, Archangel Metatron, um, who is considered to, by many to be one of the archangels who is closest to the creator. Um, he is at, he uh, is at the top of the tree of life in the Kabbalah and just a magnificent, magnificent being. Um, he's also considered to be the being who is, the angelic being who is our guide to the records. And we'll actually be doing a meditation with Archangel Metatron in a few minutes here, uh, going out into the cosmos and who knows, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. But I think first, uh, Philip is going to mm -hmm. guide us with uh, the tarot to connect with the Akashic field, which is the energy. I'm of going the to use the, Ak the Akashic tarot, a uh, unique tarot deck, which links to the Akashic field. Uh, in rather sometimes rather obscure ways, but let's see what happens. I'm going to draw from the major arcana of that deck, which is a little different from the traditional major arcana. As you'll see, the cards may be a little uh, or very different. And I'll just pick out a card here. Let's see if you can see. Let's see. Okay, there's one for us. <laughs> It's interesting while he's doing that, the one thing that we love about using oracles and tarot is that it is a way of learning and growing, but it's nonlinear. Like if you, if you read a book, you start at page one and then you go through until the end, wherever that is with the tarot or other oracle cards, like Philip just did. Um, you're drawing from the whole, it's like the whole book is there, <laughs> but you're drawing the part that is here for you today, specifically. So the divine physician number six in this deck, uh, there's a being with his hand up and several people looking at him. I'm going to read the interpretation and get a little channeling on this too. Uh, it's rather mystical again. So some of these in the Akashic Tarot seem rather cryptic when you start, but they do make sense. So hold on for a moment. We'll all hold on as this unfold, the story unfolds to us. Uh, reading the description here about the divine physician. The divine physician uh, stands before a well carrying a jug of, jug of healing water and sharing the light of healing with those nearest. Uh, upon his robe is the caduceus, the emblem of medicine and healing called uh, the diem seated by the Celts. He made the mortally wounded rise again through his incantations of sacred wounds. The powerful eternal healing spirit walks with you at this time. The card indicates that you are moving into a time of magnificent healing on many levels. There's a person who can be a great healer for you as well as a teacher who shares healing, uh, a healing gift that you can pass on to others. If you don't know this yet, uh, keep your eyes open. He or she is coming. You may also find yourself being called to help others at this time. Remember the word and thought, belief and feeling are key components in healing the self and teaching others to heal. They're important tools in the divine plan. Uh, physician's medical bag, the divine uh, 
physician's medical bag. So make sure they are part of yours too. Know that the light of healing shines through around you, through you, such a radiant um, joy can bring you being, bring being to all, well-being to all. No, wow, that's beautiful. And Any, it is, oh, go ahead. Anything you're picking up, Jane? Well, and this is, this is the idea of the Akashic Tarot is that these different images and stories can help, can support you in, uh, you could say, tuning into the Akashic field, which is what we're talking about. Um, so if you, and Philip, you might want to hold that up again. If you just imagine going into that scene with the divine physician and you're a part of the scene opening to your neck, the next step in your he healing journey, maybe that's what we'll do in the meditation, like mm -hmm. connecting with the next step in your healing journey because uh, awakening and shifting and raising our vibration is about, has a lot to do with weeding out those things that are not serving us anymore, those high, those heavier energies. So this is really meaningful, I think, to all of us as we move forward on our paths. And it's a really beautiful card. I think part of uh, the, the approach of the Akashic Tarot and and the use of imagery is that the soul connects to us most firmly through imagery. There's that idea, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Like you can say, well, healing is important. If you imagine yourself in a scene with a divine physician and you're in a place where the next step for your healing journey is going to become clear to you, and allow that to evolve in, in the right way. So you're asking, actually asking for information to be drawn from your records so that you could understand what the next step in your healing journey is. Um, that's a beautiful experience. And, mm -hmm. and I've been surprised going just in my imagination. You can do it as a, I think, imagine it like you're a child, you know, with just, a, a, a sense of wonder and awe at what might happen <laughs> and not worried about getting it wrong or um, not editing whatever your experience is because there are all these tendencies <laughs> that we have that are that completely block that energy that is trying to come through the message that's trying to come through we can we can stop it easily by doubt and of course, we, we teach a whole course in the Akashic Records, and this is part of it, is how do you go beyond <laughs> doubt? How do you overcome the barriers that might make it difficult for you to reach that place? Um, of just You have to, have to be in a state of openness. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to bring in, when we do the meditation here momentarily, the divine physician, and I'll kind of channel him through the uh, meditation, but do you, did you want to start the meditation? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can start, and I, I'm going to invite in also Archangel Metatron. We're going to just go up <laughs> into a place of possibility. So, are you ready, Philip? Ready. Okay. So we'll start out as we generally do um, here in the circle, closing our eyes if if it's safe for you to do so where you are, not driving <laughs> specifically. Um, and, and if you feel, feel like it's right for you. And breathing, again, inviting the universe to surround us with the most beautiful love and light, the perfect light for you to help you to raise your vibration. Because what we're doing is we're, we're going to a higher vibrational place. So we can just breathe in that love and light and release with the exhale. And I letting go <laughs> can really feel good. Sending that love and light all through our body and through that whole 
ball of light around us that is our energy field. And asking with our intent, which is powerful, for any energy that is not our own, energy that we might have picked up from other people, places, times, ask it to go back where it came from, lovingly, to create more space for our own energy, which actually strengthens our sense of presence in the moment. So just sending all of that back where it came from and then breathing in more light. And similarly, we leave bits of ourselves in other times with other people, other places. So we can bring those back. Any energy that's ready to come back to you, just bring it back now. And doing those simple things, you might notice you feel more firm, more firmly connected with the present moment, more firmly connected with yourself in the moment. So we're letting go of anything from the past or the future, concerns, memories, just being here. And now I'd like to invite in Archangel Metatron, who is a, just a, an amazing master. Um, he actually is one of the few archangels who was human in the past life. He's filled with all, all a wealth of wisdom to help us to grow and evolve. He's here at this time of the Great Awakening as we move into the age of Aquarius to support us in our healing journey and in our journey to awaken fully to our true divine selves. So a way to experience Metatron or any of the angels is to connect with their vibration, which can experience be experienced also as a, a color, a kind of sense of light. So um, Metatron's energy is often experienced as a, a vibrant, golden white, sparkling light. And you can receive that energy from him if you wish again opening to that flowing through your field of energy and through your body all the way down into the cells and the atoms just like a beautiful gentle breeze of spiritual energy flowing through you and love of course essentially it's love the highest of spiritual energy. So we're receiving love from Archangel Metatron. You might also experience other things. You might feel his energy. You might see him. He might be hugging you with his wings. <laughs> there are many different things that could happen. Just open to what it is, what the experience is. And with him, we want to invite in the divine physician. Um, I'm not familiar with the divine physician, but we can just sense his energy too. And together with these two beautiful beings, we're going to imagine rising up. And one of the magical things about when you imagine rising up, it does tend to raise your vibration. So we're rising up letting go of all of those mass consciousness thought forms that are surrounding us. So the way I imagine it is we, kind of, we just poke through the, the atmosphere out into that place of freedom beyond all of that chaos that is always there on the earth plane. So we're out in a place of freedom, out in the universe with surrounded by all the stars, and we're protected. Could invite in Archangel Michael, who is the angel of protection, just to make sure we're protected. And just feel that freedom. Maybe we're on a, a cloud up in the universe, just together with Archangel Metatron and the Divine Physician, opening to what they want to share with us today. 
And so with that, Philip, I'd like to just open it to your what you want to share from the divine physician. Okay, let me connect more directly with the divine physician. Yes, I am here. Um, as you open your heart, you have more possibilities to heal. Realize that your body uh, must endure many difficulties, including uh, the physical external circumstances of your reality and your internal thoughts and feelings, uh, from often responses, reactions to your externals and carryovers from past lives. So when things get out of balance, uh, injury and illness uh, results, the idea is to return to your heart and balance and know that you are a divine being and breathe in that love into all the cells of your body and attune them with wonderful uh, movements and wonderful sounds and music and things that enhance your life while addressing the areas that need uh, attention and, and nurturing and repair at the same time. And I'm here as a uh, as a resource, as a beacon, as a uh, as an assistant to that reminder of that inner healer within you all. Uh, and you can uh, stoke that inner healer by uh, calling forth that it come from your heart and arise and have it show you the images and the sounds and the people and the resources that will help you heal, come back into wholeness and balance with much love, the divine physician. Mm, thank you, Philip. And thank you to the divine physician. And that, that is such a beautiful thing to recognize, too, that we are healers. We have the ability to heal within us. And I'm not saying that to suggest that that's the only place to go. But ultimately, we need to understand that nobody, even a doctor, a medical doctor, a spiritual healer, uh, no one can actually heal us except ourselves. In other words, like, I'm the only one who can heal my body. And we actually, we have <laughs> an elemental wisdom within us, too. That, that is supporting us in healing. Um, and we have, as Philip was suggesting, we have thoughts and feelings that are in opposition to the things that we need to be able to heal. And really to open, open more, when we heal something, we open more to the light of our truth, the light of our true selves. You know, that the fire, you could say, the the life force that is going to move us forward in the most um, magical and mystical and wonderful ways. And then when we need support, like when I was talking about uh, the past life where I, I uh, was burned at the stake, my personal belief is that I would not have had that experience without the presence of others who could support me. And I do think we need, we need others to support us. Um, it can be helpful to learn about healing. It can be helpful to learn about how to access the Akashic records and be able to journey uh, into the different dimensions on our own. There are many, many things that are possible for us. And as the divine physician suggested, the opportunity before you now and in any moment, really, is to open to what might be possible for you. What is your next step on your journey? And if you're not aware of what that is now, just allow it to emerge. I know sometimes people who attend, we have a holistic coaching and healing program who come and, and want to sign up for the program, they'll often say, well, I've been looking for years for the right program, and I knew it when I saw it. I knew this was it. So allow your inner knowing to guide you wherever that might be. Guide you more into yourself, guide you more into the resources that are around you. Creating 
a support structure around you. And the circle is here for that also. Part of the reason for the circle is that we need to have a supportive spiritual family around us so that we don't feel like we're completely crazy, <laughs> for one thing, and for many reasons. And we're more powerful together than we are apart. Did you have any more insights on that, Philip? I, th I think that's right about uh, if you ask for the next step for, in this case, healing, it will be provided for you. What do I need to help me in my healing journey mm -hmm. and provide a resource for me? Right. And is the next step internal or external or both? Right. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Where is it that you need to go? And I sense there are so many angels and guides around us. Uh, one of the things with when we were talking about opening to our full range of resources, uh, the place where we started was connecting with the archangels. And I know there are many with us right now who are here supporting us energetically though not seen by us and also are offering the opportunity for us to connect with them. So that's one of the, the things that we offer also is assistance with that because it's such a magical experience and they are, the angels are divine beings of love. They have not become disconnected as humans have from the love of the creator, from the from the truth of the creator. They haven't been contaminated <laughs> by, by separation as we have. So they're beautiful beings that are around us and the ascended masters are around us as our teachers. They are generally different from the archangels with some slight excep exceptions, as I mentioned, because the Ascended Masters have experienced that sense of separation. They have been, <laughs> they have had experiences of being uh, people or beings on generally beings who have been, have experienced lives here, sometimes lives on other planets. Cosmic Masters. It just, it feels to me today that this is an opportunity to explore that full range of resources that is available to us to recognize that all of these beings of light are here for us and offer teaching, they offer healing. Um, one that I feel is standing or stepping forward who is uh, connected closely connected also with with the helping us to move into the new ages uh, ascended master saint germain who brings us the violet flame i don't know what time it is we might just take a moment can invite saint germain to come in I and mean, he is a master <laughs> uh, magician healer another just fabulous being of light who can support us. And his one of his gifts to humanity now is the violet flame. So we can, if you're open to it, just invite him to come closer and surround you with the perfect violet light. Could be a flame of, I experience it more as spark, sparkling light. It is the movement, I think, the violet flame, the movement of that violet light that is so powerful. So we can just surround ourselves with it. And again, feel it within your body, asking it to, to clear out whatever might be blocking you now from recognizing your magnificence. And you can pick, you can use this for anything anything that might come up that is holding you down. 
just surrounding yourself. And it might be a deep shade of violet. It might be like a, an amethyst with the deep colors and the lilacs and then the white points with sparkles on them. Um, whatever feels right to you. Violet is the highest frequency of light that is perceptible to us as humans. It's very powerful healing energy. And St. Germain wants to bless us and let us know how pleased he is that we are open in the way that we are to be here now, to be here together. Philip, are you receiving any any messages from St. Germain? Uh, let me see. Yes, all is light and all is love, and you can draw on that as an infinite resource in your in your day and right now, knowing that there's an infinite potential in each moment that you can draw from and in turn uh, spread that to other people, shine that light and energy and love through you. Thank you. And so with that, we're going to prepare to return to our normal waking states coming back, first thanking St. Germain, thanking the Divine Physician, thanking Archangel Metatron, Archangel Michael, and all of the beautiful beings who are surrounding us and stabilizing our energy for us here in this moment. And with that, we can imagine drifting down beautifully, down back into our seats or wherever we're resting, imagining or placing our feet firmly on the ground, connecting with the earth, grounding ourselves to the earth. You might imagine roots going down into the earth. And breathing in more active energy, returning us to our normal waking states. You might want to stretch, whatever feels right to come back to being ready to open your eyes. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Mm, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Quite a journey. Yes. <laughs> Out into the cosmos. <laughs> Yeah, the divine physician, that was an interesting being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was another Never. resource for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the final thing that we do um, as we're preparing to close is imagine that light flowing out from you to the world. And my world, I often just surround, surround it in, in my mind and with my hands with love and light. And of course, we can send it to people and places that need love now. We can return again. Those who know Sharon, we can be sending her healing love, healing light. Send it to our local communities. Two places maybe where people are struggling in the world. To others we know who could use a little more, which is just about everybody, actually. <laughs> we all we all can use more love. I've never heard of too much love. <laughs> and with that, um, Philip, would you like to uh, let people know how they can learn more about what we're doing at Awake News Institute? Sure. Uh, uh, we'd like to offer you a uh, free uh, guide portion of our new Awakening to Your Magnificent book. And it's uh, with a video. It's part of our spiritual guide program. And you go to tinyurl.com slash guide dash intro, tinyurl.com slash guide dash intro to get this free excerpt and video from our new spiritual guide programs uh, overview book. Right. And this one, Awakening to Your Magnificence, really is the product of uh, our our work in recent years uh, since uh, 
focusing with Archangel Metatron on connecting to our full range of resources and really about um, how mystery schools operate here on planet Earth, which is really magical too. So um, so we invite you to, to explore that. And we do have a, we have a course coming up in May, right on the Akashic Records? Right, we do have a course on, on uh, tapping into the Akashic Records and spiritual guidance course. So go mm -hmm. to uh, gettingthrough.org slash uh, spiritual, uh, getting thru.org slash spiritual and find the uh, upcoming uh, spiritual guide certification program. Mm -hmm. I think if they sign up for the the book excerpt also, they'll be notified of the You'll course. Be, that probably. would be the place to start and give you an overview of things. Mm -hmm. See if it feels, you know, and this is the same thing. Ask your heart, look into your heart for the next steps for you. Whatever yeah. feels right to you is the right place to go. <laughs> right. The tinyurl.com slash guide dash intro. Wonderful. And for those who want to support the circle, we're here every week on Facebook. Um, at Enlightened World Network, also at Awakening Circle, Circle of Love and Light page. Um, you can follow our page, which uh, it's, again, facebook.com forward slash awakenings circle. Um, the, one of the pluses with it is <laughs> during the week, there are many events at Enlightened World Network. If you want to be able to come more easily back, if you missed the circle, um, you can look at it. Look at it on our, on the circle page on Facebook too. You can also share this video with your friends on Facebook, um, and invite your friends to join you in the circle. Then you have something probably new. <laughs> I would think something different to talk about. Um, and of course, the final thing that we do every week is send the love and light that we have collectively gathered out into the week ahead for you filling your whole week with love and light. Knowing that as you as you move through it, that you'll be able to sense that, the presence of that love and light for you. So with that, the final thing is just to wish you a wonderful week. Bye for now. Bye-bye.